On this episode, I'm gonna give you a glimpse into the future of trucks. What's going on with heavy duty trucks, big commercial trucks, and also semis to make driving actually easier and safer. Right here, I have a heavy duty truck. It's basically a Chevy Silverado that's been electrified. I'll give you all the details in a second. Here I have a box truck you might be using to move, but it has a brand new transmission power line by ZF. And I'm also gonna show you some technologies available on new semi trucks to make them safer and easier to drive. So let me start with this. Let me tell you all about this Chevy. It took a while to get up here. We started out around 1959. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. This video is made possible by ZF or ZF, depending on where in the world you are. Uh, they built uh, components for all kinds of vehicles, including passenger cars, pickup trucks, and giant uh, commercial vehicles as well. And there's a lot of controversy online about electrification, about autonomous driving, about jobs. So I want to set the record straight and show you exactly what's happening with the latest technology. So what they've done here is actually they're showing their e-beam electric axle. So in the future, uh, they say by about 2030, half, half of the heavy duty and commercial trucks would be electrified. And this is one way of doing it, basically replacing the differential on the solid axle on the back of a working truck with an electric motor and getting it to production as quickly and easily as possible. So I'm gonna go for a ride in this with Ryan and I'm gonna show exactly how it drives. So right now we're drawing four amps. So that's our power steering pumps and our coolant pumps taken away. Air from conditioning, it. all that yep, stuff. all that fun stuff. And then when we do the regeneration, that number will switch to a positive and it'll show how many amps you're putting back into the battery system. And then the last screen is just some temperatures at various locations. It's still a development vehicle. Yeah, and you have several battery modules, you know, right. you're trying to monitor all these right. things. Can you go back to the original screen yep. as well? Here's the original. So yeah, so here, here's my brake pressure, like you were saying, mm -hmm. my RPM, mm -hmm. and my power requested and on regen Correct. as well. Correct. So Correct. that's pretty cool. All right, so let's get going. Okay. But before we get going, can you please introduce yourself? Sure. <laughs> sure, my name is Ryan McAllister. I work for ZF as a a technical project lead for this vehicle, the, the, what we call our e-beam demonstration vehicle. So right now I just want to point out that we're in the economy mode. So the, the, this is where the, the ramp rate of acceleration is kind of limited. Slow ramp rate and we limit it to about 65% torque. Okay. Just to give an example of what this would look like in, for the OEM. Well, can we go in the full launch mode? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, full <laughs> launch would be the D3. Okay. And this is the aggressive ramp rate. And then off pedal regeneration is mid, uh -huh. I would classify it. And then when you apply the brake, it's also at a mid level. So we apply uh, regeneration with the brake pedal as well. Sweet. By the way, this is your prototype, but it's really well integrated. I mean, you're okay. using the digital screen, you're using your little shifter yep, yep. mechanism here. It's, it's really cool. Thank you. So tell me about the motor, right? So mm -hmm. it basically fits underneath the chassis Correct. where a standard differential axle would fit, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, so this is our, what we call the PI-10. So we have a family of motors. So this is a 310 millimeter diameter OD PSM motor. Through the center of that is where, we, where the axle shafts go. So this is a, what you would call a coaxial design. So okay. So from the electric motor, there's a gear reduction system, 12 to one re reduction system. So the motor generates about 850 Newton meters of torque. And then through that 12 to one reduction, bumps it up to about 12, or I'm sorry, 10,000 Newton meters of output torque. So you do have that reduction box. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And the, you, as a basis, you use the 2500 series uh, GM heavy duty. Correct. Um, so we're talking about, you know, the weight class of around what high 10,000 or almost 11,000 gross right. vehicle weight, right? Correct, correct. And this, this vehicle at the prototype stage that it is, is at just shy of 10,000 pounds right now. Okay. So we took the battery, I'm sorry, the engine and the transmission out, put a bunch of batteries in there, 210 kilowatt power of batteries yep. and everything else. And at the end of the day, it nets about 10,000 pounds, just shy of 10,000 pounds. Well, this is a test bed for you, right? Correct. Test, test vehicle. I mean, you didn't have to put all those batteries in. That's correct. That's correct. But so you have like what? But you do have a 210 kilowatt hours? Yes. 
That's yes. quite a bit. It's quite a bit, and uh, the the thinking the thinking behind that is that ultimately we will most likely put a secondary axle on the front, so we'll have enough power and and range to be able to do some good evaluations with that battery. So you're targeting like almost like four wheel drive, all wheel drive type stuff. That's correct. Okay, that's correct. So what kind of vehicle classes would something like this? You said you had a range of motors, maybe right. to choose from. Right. Um, it really depends on the on the manufacturer, but what we're seeing is through our motor and inverter technology, which is all within ZF, we can we can encapture roughly between this size vehicle, 2500 series vehicle, all the way up to 5500 series vehicle with the same motor and the same power electronics. Okay. Of course, different gearing and such to 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 be able to do that, but from the three-in-one solution so the motor and the inverter and then the third one being the gear train you know two of those three are are you know used in the in the next size up vehicles i got you and the motor i saw the specs is about 350 kilowatt which is about 470 uh, horsepower right correct at least this one. correct at least this one correct and what about like 400 volt versus 800 volt systems mm -hmm. are you thinking about offering both types of systems uh, yeah, I mean that's really driven by by the the manufacturer. But what we're, what we're seeing is the tendency to go towards more of the 800 volt system, higher voltages. Yes, yeah. yes. But it won't say that 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 we're still getting interest in the 400 volt systems. I think I think it's really a trade off. I mean, from what I've seen, it's between cost mm -hmm. and um performance right charging performance correct. and all that stuff right that's correct that's what we see yes well i gotta say so my first impression mm -hmm. i i've obviously have never driven this truck before yep. your your concept yeah um and we're in dynamic mode still correct correct um it's just really smooth good so like what i've noticed with some other vehicles there could be you know you could catch it off guard you can have a little bit of jerky yeah. action yeah i'm not feeling it here good um, and regen is also very smooth. Like I'm letting go of the pedal right now. Yep. We're slowing down. Yep. Which this is a mid-level. We do have a, a more a aggressive. More aggressive. If you want to feel that, we could switch to that on the fly. Okay. How about let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to go to D6, which is our still aggressive. But oh, I feel really that. Really feel the difference. Yeah, I feel that. That's probably for towing, right? If you have a trailer, that's maybe. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Almost acts as a you know a, a trailer brake type of situation, and where we're where we're driving up to, there is a pretty pretty nice little hill, and you'll be able to really experience it going down there. What's that other noise? Yeah, now I have to point out that this vehicle has a has a flaw to it. So from the power steering perspective, we had to come up with a solution for power steering and power brakes, which is traditionally the engine drives a hydraulic pump, sure. gives it hydraulic pressure feeds a steering gear, and then that's what gives you the power steering. Right now we do the same thing, but with an electric motor, give it high, you know, hydraulic pressure, steer, you feed the system. This sound comes up through the steering shaft. I have not been able to eliminate it, but as soon as I disconnect that shaft, the noise goes away. So, okay. so we do have some solutions in the works, maybe a belt-driven power steering system. Um, we just haven't, haven't had the I, opportunity to do I, it yet. I kind of see that. Yeah, I mean, this is, once again, you know, you're providing the components, right? Yep. And then right. for OEMs, other manufacturers, mm -hmm. right? Correct. And yes. you know, if they want to integrate it in a different way, they can they can exactly. choose Exactly, so. exactly. Yep. I think the normal gas engine really masks that sound because I think the sound is avail you know, available. It's probably there. <laughs> Everywhere uh -huh. in the in the vehicle. Yeah, that's the thing about electric vehicles. I mean you're hearing other things. It exposes other things yeah some <laughs> rattles or something else that yep. may be in, inside I'll, I'll let him go there you go and he's you, climbing up you can just this take is pretty intense um you know hill so that just take the butt that's just no brake that's just letting your pedal off yep no brake i'm not using zero brake pedal yeah, it's about all, four, all. four thousand newton meters of regeneration torque sweet and obviously you're putting that back in the battery that's correct right? that's correct all right, let me give it some juice. Yep. <laughs> Did you hear that? I heard it. I heard it. So, I mean, why did you choose that reduction? I, it sounds like an aggressive 12. Did you say 12 to 1? 12 to 1, yep. It sounds a little aggressive to me. Well, that, that, that ratio was based upon what's required in terms of overall vehicle torque. So this, this vehicle 
what we're targeting is the gas engine capabilities. So mm -hmm. that's the torque you need to match the gas engine. But then the other side of the spectrum is top speed, right? So you can you can really increase that ratio, get a lot of torque, but then you lose it on the top end. So mm -hmm. we still maintain the you know the the top speed of the vehicle as well as the required torque. Okay, so you, you kind of found a happy medium exactly. kind of there. And I can see you go up to what, about 12,000 RPM cool. on the motor itself. Yep. And obviously that's where the top speed limit comes, exactly. comes from, right? Exactly, yep. Well, I'm not hearing any motor almost because it's way out there. Yeah. I'm almost hearing no like whine or electric motor whine. Yep. So yep. it's way in the back. Yeah, I mean, we haven't done anything from the vehicle perspective to mask any sound or, or anything. I mean, this, this, this truck is pretty good when it comes to you know, insulation on the inside, but but we haven't done anything. I got gotcha. you. We can open that back window if you wanted to try to hear some motor whine. It's, it's, <laughs> I it's, would rather hear tire squeal as, yeah, we, yeah. as we lay 11s <laughs> in this truck. That's what I would like. <laughs> so, well, really cool. Yeah. And you said you can choose, I mean, if you don't want all this extra power, you, I mean, you could select which motor kind of you want, right? That's correct, yeah. I mean, this, this was, this was, let's say, available, and we could bring it to the market as fast as possible. So that's why this motor slash in inverter was chosen for this application. I have one more question. Sure. I was underneath the truck yep. a little bit ago. Yep. And the motor itself, this one, yep. it looks large. Yep. And what about like ground clearance? I've, we got a lot of questions from some of our viewers yep. before yep. on like durability and like just overall running over tough terrain yep yep have you have you thought about those things yeah i mean this axle that you're looking at in here is a development axle let's this is not ready to go into production we have some cool uh you know oil lines that are hanging in different spots and the reasoning there is so that we could really fine tune the oil delivery system for the for the powertrain for the gears inside the bearings and such but with that being said what then we'll do is we'll incorporate those into the the, the casting for example we'll have integrated uh ports and such yeah hit that put go into park so in terms of ground clearance i mean it's clear that the, the the oems give us targets to hit as far as ground clearance and 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 that's what we're working on right now with the with the oems so this is one example a coaxial design everything about the barrel basically but we have offset designs too where you can use a smaller motor put it more towards the front of the axle and really shrink that space overall space height. okay okay so yeah i got you i mean basically we can we can capture or we can package in any environment at this point and still have that axle attachment coming into, you don't have to redesign the axle That's attachment correct. points, yeah, which it, is a big deal. Yeah, so this is a drop-in solution. So the same leaf spring interface, the same shock absorber interface, it is a full drop-in solution as it sits. All right, well, thanks a lot. I really enjoyed this. Thank yeah, you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So obviously this is a demo vehicle. It's showing basically the drive modes that it could be available and the power that could be available in a package like this. And I'm really impressed as you saw, accelerates really fast, really smooth regen braking. Uh, and also, well, they managed to put a lot of battery capacity into this test vehicle. So it's up to manufacturers like GM, Ford, of course, Ram and others to maybe take some of these components and actually employ them, put them into production, but not get rid of the diesel engines. This is where it brings me to the commercial truck. All right, let's switch gears right here. What you can see is something called a box truck, 26 footer and you may be seeing it on the highway, you know, actually people use it to move state to state, uh, also rental truck. And it has a six, straight six, 6.7 liter Cummins engine under the hood. That's nothing special. I mean, it's, it's been using this engine for a very long time. But what is new or new-ish is that it's using the ZF transmission underneath. ZF has really been famous for their transmissions, right? They have them on performance cars, they have them in pickup trucks, Ram 1500, for example, Ram 2500 heavy duty trucks with the 6.4 liter Hemi use ZF transmissions. And now that transmission has been upsized, redesigned, still eight speeds and put in a big truck like this. So how's it to drive? Well, let me jump in with Pete and actually Take it for a drive. So Pete, hello. Hi, how you doing? Thanks for coming along with me. <laughs> no problem. So can you introduce yourself, please? My name is Pete Casper. I'm part of the ZF team out of Lafayette. 
I've spent the last three and a half years working on power line for Packart and just recently took a job with the a new job with the product innovation team. Sweet. So we're basically what we're testing, what, what I'm testing, because I haven't driven this transmission before, is the power line eight speed ZF big truck transmission Me medium basically. Duty, yep. Yeah, medium, medium duty. duty. Yep. So let me throw it into drive. There's a stock here on the steering right -hand wheel. Stock. Yep. And we got air brakes, right? Yes. So And if you need, you've got a backup camera right here. Backup camera right there. So these trucks, these box trucks, are sometimes people use to move, right, homes, right? Correct. Or kind of they're kind of rental vehicles, so to yes. speak, as well. So it has to be easy to drive, right? Yes. So what are some of the benefits of of the power line? Uh, well, one of the things we do is we calculate load, road resistance, grade, so that when you come to a stop, if it makes the most sense, we'll actually start in second gear instead of first. Um, one of the things you'll see when we go downhill, I'll have you turn the engine brake on. Okay. We, we elevate the shift points, the downshift points, to help with the uh, get additional vehicle braking. Okay. And then, and then obviously smoothness, right? Yes. Drivability. The, the shift quality is better than a lot of passenger cars that I've been in. Well, I'm try, trying to kind of gauge it right now. I think it shifted a couple of times. But I didn't really notice. Yeah, you're probably in the fourth or fifth gear. Yeah. So some, I mean, some of the other trucks, uh, I mean, before they also used Allison transmissions, right? Yes. And I think those were six speeds, if I'm not. Yes, they are. Yes. Yeah. So you're getting obviously more gear ratios, and I'm assuming that's also a fuel economy uh, benefit there. Yes. And again, we can optimize for further fuel economy. Right now, what we've done for the Packard release is. Performance, wherever, or performance all the time, wherever possible, look for fuel economy. I see, I got you. And I, I, I tapped the brake going downhill here, and it already downshifts yes. for me. So, so it has that logic. And by performance, you mean, you know, acceleration, you know, with the load, right? Yes. Fully, fully laden, basically. Yes. This is a tight yeah. road, dude. This is like a racetrack. <laughs> So you said which button is it to uh, for engine braking? This or, is right here. So just, I would go ahead and get some speed up. When you crest the top of the hill, take your foot off the accelerator. Okay. And, just, and this is, by the way, this is a common 6.7, right? Yes. There, I just took it off. Yep. Then you're probably gonna need a little bit of brake. And I'm at about 2200 RPM. Coming into the hairpin turn. <laughs> it's like, you know, Indy car, yeah. now, almost a road course. What we've been doing is have people stop going up the hill. So you'll see some tire marks. I see. About where he's at right now. Yeah. We've been coming to a complete stop. Okay, hold on. You're fine. Right here? Yep. Kind of on the hill. Yep. And then just stop. Now, we, this doesn't have hill start assist. Okay. So I need you to two foot it. So put your two, left foot two on foot the brake. Okay. So just give it a little bit of gas and then, or floor it, drop your foot off, and that way we won't roll back. Okay, so kind of floor it? Yeah, just... Is it going to lay down a, uh, no, 11? No, no, it will not. <laughs> but at least you don't get the roll back. Yeah, I can feel like that. The, so, and if we were fully loaded to 26K, we'd still pull this hill. And there's a no roll back feature also in the newer versions? Yes. Or, okay. Well, right, the, the hill start assist or hill start yes. aid, it's an option. It can be per you okay. can buy it. Okay. Okay, and this transmission is in production now. Yes, in trucks with Packard, with Packard right? for their their medium duty market. Yes, so both Peterbilt and uh, and, the, and Kenworth. And excuse Kenworth. me. Well, you know, uh, I saw some questions online of people who, just regular people, consumers, right, who are buying some of these trucks. Yeah. Not buying, renting them to move. Yes. And they're sometimes intimidated, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, can I drive this across country? Yeah. And I think the answer is. Yeah, that's pretty easy to drive. I mean, because there's some of them are designed to be, you know, not CDL because you know right. you're lower right. than twenty six thousand pounds. Um, and yeah, you can use it for uh, to move uh, well in some distance. Most of these vehicles are road speed limited. Like for example, this you can't exceed seventy miles an hour. Yeah. So I think that's another thing that. 
people don't really you know understand they see the big truck and it's like well if I'm going too fast but it's I think it's a good combination of and just experience yeah totally I mean obviously you need to be aware of its size right, right yeah I mean uh, it is big and long really tall but relatively easy to drive and is, is this transmission related to some of the uh, consumer pickups like Ram uses that in um, as ZF transmission in their 25 heavy duty yeah, series. Yeah, what I'll say is the initial design was based off of the passenger car model. So, so for example, this transmission here has the same solenoid package as the passenger car. Our test vehicle over there has the current production, which is a nine HP solenoid, which is will help for this market and extended life of the transmission. So it's also obviously the durability of yeah. it is yes. really important. And you said, uh, what what class of truck can this go into? It, it's like it's five and six? High end of five, mostly six, seven, eight. Six, seven, well, eight? Or low end of the eight. Okay. Yeah. So not like true over the road trucks? It, well, this, or, about 57,000 pounds is what it's rated at. Okay. So, Gross, yeah, low, gross yeah. vehicle weight. Low end of the, of the eight. Yeah. I gotcha. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Dude. That was a good experience. <laughs> All right. A couple things immediately come to mind. Just easy driving experience. The shifts are super smooth. This was like driving a pickup truck or actually a car. It was that easy. Although of, this is a huge vehicle, I was in a very tight road, as you saw right there. But it has really great engine braking, um, even when fully loaded. Um, and it's capable to about 57,000 pounds of gross vehicle weight rating. So yeah, that's a lot of capability and still smooth shifting. Maybe a little bit better efficiency too, like Pete was telling me. But what about bigger trucks? Let me switch gears to the big semi. So I've been reading a lot of your comments and you say, what about autonomous big trucks and also electrification? We already covered the electrification piece. It's coming, but it's never gonna replace all internal combustion engines, at least not in bigger trucks. And of course, for semis, you have to be able to go long distance and do it safely. And diesel right now is the only way to do it, in, at least in my opinion, uh, when you're talking about 800 miles or 900 miles chunks of distance uh, with full loads. But you can still make it safer. So this is why ZF has their ProGuard Max solution, where, which is basically a driver assistance suite of technologies. Uh, adaptive cruise control system, blind spot monitoring, a collision mitigation, collision avoidance, and many, many other technologies wrapped into one package or a la carte. So here is me at the proving grounds showing you how it works. So I was told this truck is equipped only with forward facing sensors. So right. radar and camera, right? Right. So it doesn't have like blind spot monitoring, but you could add that if you wanted to. Yeah, we, so we do have um, some blind spot systems that are being worked on. Uh, we don't have it on this truck right now, um, but I know there are some various systems that we're working on. How about steering assist? Is this truck equipped? This truck is for... actually equipped with steering assist, yeah. Okay. It uh, was added after production and that's why we don't have a nice panel covering it, but that's, okay. that's what you're seeing right here. So it can do lane correction if needed? Uh, if or... it, so that, um, has to be fully integrated with lane departure warning and with um, blind spot on this particular truck. It just hasn't been done yet. But yeah, we're, it, we do have the capability. Um, it hasn't been set up on this truck yet. I'll kind of give you an overview of, of what we're gonna do then. So the plan is to, uh, we're gonna run back that side of the track, go around the loop, and then we're going to approach that stationary car there at approximately 50 miles per hour. And then you'll see the system uh, provide a warning. First, you'll hear an audible warning, and it's hard to see while it's all happening, but there is a warning that pops up on the dash. After the, the warning, we'll get a haptic warning, which is a lighter brake application. And then after that, we'll go into full collision mitigation braking uh, when the system will do its, its higher deceleration. So you can actually feel a little bit lighter brake, and then the heavier brakes come on. And you won't be touching the brakes. Will the system will brakes. be acting, yeah, right? Yeah, it's going to be all the system. Okay. We will uh, go around that object, and then um, you probably noticed the other, uh, what we call vulnerable road users. So we love to throw acronyms around. VRU. VRU. Yes, yes. VRU, vulnerable road user. And 
the way I usually describe that when I say, do you know what a vulnerable road user is? No, you are. Um, As a person walking or biking, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so bicycle and walking, that's a vulnerable road yeah. user. We're going to run a little lower speed with the vulnerable road user because it is relying on strictly the camera. And if you're going faster, for example, in the um, car mm -hmm. scenario, faster than 50 miles per hour, would the system still operate, but maybe it will can't avoid an impact completely but lessen the impact is that the, the idea yeah, yeah so the systems it's designed with the goal of being able to uh, reduce the speed by 50 miles per hour so we're making a little loop getting up to speed right yep yeah doing a nice little bank to loop here Alright, so we're approaching the target. I, are you at about 50 miles an hour? Yep, 50 miles an hour. So you did not touch the brakes? Did not touch the brakes. I still haven't touched the brakes. You feel the truck start to roll back a little bit because uh, I haven't touched them at all. Gotcha. And so there was audible warning. You said there's a little bit visual warning. Yep. And then, of course, the brake system comes on. Yeah, and then you, you probably notice I kind of started out with a little lighter brake, and then the system's checking and saying that's not enough brake application, so it increases the braking um, to try to get us to stop right at that distance. And you had some room space left? Yes. Yep. Oh, and how are we loaded or are we running empty? Uh, so we're mostly empty. There's uh, a little few items in the trailer, but nothing, okay. nothing with any weight. If you were heavy, if you were at 80,000, yeah. so the system will obviously apply the, the braking that it thinks it needs exactly, for maximum yeah. for maximum effect. Yep, so to get, we got a little couple minutes, so to get a little technical, um, when the system wants to apply the brakes, it actually does so by sending a request to the, the braking system, to the ABS and stability control. So it sends a request to that system. Um, that system is actually doing some calculations while we're driving. Um, when I apply the brakes, the system is looking at how hard am I applying the brakes, how much deceleration am I getting. So it can use that to adjust that initial apply. So it figures out how much brake pressure is required for that particular level of deceleration that we want. It also does a mass estimation when we accelerate. It looks at the combination of engine torque and the rate of acceleration and can use that to estimate I mean, you're not going to make it through a scale with that number, but it gets a rough number of uh, what it thinks the mass is. And it can use all of that information to adjust the braking. When the event actually occurs, uh, again, the, the collision mitigation system sends that message to the ABS. ABS says, okay, I need to do my initial apply. So it runs the valves to get how much pressure it thinks it needs. It measures the deceleration, and then it can adjust up or down accordingly to try to get right into what it's looking for. Um, and then in the case where we're you know, doing a run like this, where we actually have that two levels, um, it's the collision mitigation system that says, you know what, we need to bump that up a little bit. And that's where you felt that kind of second harder apply coming in. And then to apply the ABS, I could feel the ABS pulsing too. Yeah, so you could hear all the valves, yeah. all the pneumatic valves that are doing their jobs um, to adjust that pressure. So you heard all those valves. Um, and then absolutely, because it goes through the ABS, you're guaranteed that ABS is still functional and you have the protection that ABS provides. Um, if there was an issue with ABS, then you know if you cut a wheel speed sensor or something like that, um, you'll obviously get an ABS lamp on the dash, but the collision mitigation system's gonna fault out as well. And, um, and then essentially tell the driver, look, these, you know, the, the features that I provide are not available with a warning on the dash. So you're doing about 20 miles an hour now? Yep, yeah, so for this one, we're gonna do 20 miles an hour. And, you know, in, in the last uh, run, the radar and camera are working together, as I already mentioned. Um, for this maneuver, it's just the camera, because the radar can't rely on track the smaller object. So it's the camera's responsibility to detect this and respond to it. And you're not touching anything? Correct. That came pretty close. It did come pretty close, but, but it, it didn't hit it. Right. <laughs> And I'm still not touching the brake pedal. So. Okay. Um, and depending on the run, sometimes it's a little further, a little bit closer. But um, you know, we're kind of with the, the with this target and relying on just the camera. We have a lighter braking. So you notice that braking was actually much lighter yeah. than the first one. So with that lower braking, um, that's why we're not running on higher speeds. 
And he's shaking a little bit. I can see he was scared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he was. And right now I'm inside of the test facility that ZF has here in Ohio and it just shows some of the test vehicles that they actually put miles on here at the testing facility and also on public roads. Uh, you see trucks like this Freightliner here with additional sensors and cameras you can see in the windshield. Um, and basically this is testing um, driver assistance technologies. So adaptive cruise, lane centering, etc. They also have vehicles like this. I haven't seen a vehicle like this in person, but um, it shows some of the equipment they add to it. So come over this way. So this particular vehicle is electrified. So it's a bar battery electric semi truck. You can kind of see because I was curious, you can kind of see electric motors down there, one on each axle, but mostly what I wanted to show you is some of the test equipment that they add. For example, sensors on the brake system and also some other t test equipment that helps prevent jackknife situations because they're testing semi-truck and trailer uh, maneuvers and sometimes some of those maneuvers are testing the stability control systems where the trailer might swing out so they have additional jackknife prevention plates like this with a tether additional tether to the trailer to prevent uh, damage basically so uh, this is how they test um, the semi trucks right here at the test facility now let's take a look at some of the other technologies that are related to the trailer specifically we're talking about semi-truck trailers. So of course we all want to be safe and uh, some of this um, technology and equipment allows fleet operators and drivers to operate their trucks more safely. For example, here you can see an example of kind of the brain that sits on the trailer and a Wi-Fi enabled or cellular enabled uh, communication device that can upload data to the cloud. And on this side, you can see a few more components. Basically, ZF recently merged and acquired Webco, which is an expert in brake solutions. And now it's a holistic solution. Basically, the technology that's on the truck itself, communicating and also getting data from the trailer. And it's all done over the air, basically in the cloud. So stuff like flat tires, notifications, brake wear, etc. makes the whole truck safer. So here's my bottom line on this. It's basically like having a giant toolbox. You can pick a truck for your need and your use case and your job. If you need a three quarter ton or a one ton truck, if you need it electrified, maybe you have shorter distances to go. You have a solution for that. If, you, if that's not your use case, get a diesel engine. Uh, like with this box truck, if you need smoothness, in a big vehicle to go long distance, bam, transmission. And finally, for the big semi, making the driving experience easier and smoother and safer. So there you have it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, alttfl.com is where you'll find everything automotive in one place. <laughs>